All right. Here we have a neat little radio. We're going to do this one alongside the uh, Crossley. Uh, while, while the Crossley glue is hardening, we'll go ahead and work on this one. It's a little um, five-tube uh, mini radio. It's made out of solid Bakelite. Uh, has no cracks in it. No clean. No cracks, okay? Oh yeah, there's one crack right here. We got one crack on this side. I thought I felt it crunching, but this is a, this is an easy crack to fix. We'll just fill it with with uh, epoxy and glue it, and when we sand it in, it'll be invisible. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to coat the thing. We're going to paint it a color and then coat it with the um, the clear coat epoxy to make it just into a beautiful little table radio. And um, you know, a little radio like this will be worth over a hundred dollars when it's all restored. You know, even though right now it's worth about ten dollars, uh, by the time we're done it's going to be a beautiful one. Alright, first thing to do we got to get all the stuff out of there to where we can work on it. Knobs, of course, don't match. Doesn't matter. We'll put real good knobs on there. Nice little take light knob. Here. Made out of metal. Look <laughs> at that mess up. A little military, military knob came off of a military radio. All right. Um, okay, we have one screw here. Right. Yeah, it's a little messy inside, but not. Anything that isn't uh, typical. Only paid five dollars for it, so it's not not that big a deal. Okay, the speaker. Okay, I got lots and lots of speakers this size. This one is. Not only is the cone pretty screwed up, but it's rubbing, so we we'll plan on just replacing that. <clears throat> no problem. All right, the uh, tuning condenser. Well. Okay, the spring. Yeah. Okay, a little dial pointer. Okay, we save that. We don't want to lose that. Alright, and this string is junk. Throw it away. Alright, now that gets that. Okay, we need that off of there. Okay, we save the screws, save that. Okay, now we can get to the speaker. Now, I'm going to leave that off there until we get the sandblasting done. We're going to sandblast this a lot like we did the other one. Let's check. Okay. Okay. Nice tight tube sockets. Okay, this one, see how it's, uh, how it's got fog in there? The, the white, the getters turn white, so this tube is a dud. Um, it's got a nice nickel plate, which I'm going to rescue to use in the tube making. That was easy. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't fastened in there very good. See, and that
see that makes a nice piece of nickel plate that I use in, in making tubes. That's, that's for plates and stuff in tubes, so I save that. The rest of it isn't worth bothering with. Okay. This one here, the getter's intact, it's okay, 35Z5, and here, okay, alright, now, okay, the, this used to have an antenna coil on the back of it, this is what fastened to, so I will get rid of, We'll find another antenna coil to use that will fit on the back of that, that radio. Okay, now I'm going to take this out and sandblast it. Got all that rust and stuff on there. I'll go sandblast the chassis and um, spray it with um, lacquer. Okay, this is the line cord holding thing. Okay, I want to get that piece of line cord out of there. Alright, we have to get that holder out of there, so we use this. Okay, that gets rid of the rivet. wires on there so we know where the line cord goes without having to, to fool with it. Okay, and then that rivet, <coughs> get that out of there, that ain't gonna come. It's not cooperating. Well, we'll force it to cooperate. And when we put it back together, we'll just put a screw in there. Okay. Ready to sandblast. Ooh. Okay. We've got it um, sandblasted. Notice how the rust is gone. And um, we've got it painted with the uh, lacquer. Nice and nice and smooth. So that means it won't rust in the future. Okay. And we've got all the uh, sand out of the tuning condenser and out of the IF can. Okay. Now, we've got some brand new speaker here. This was in perfect condition. And we will just stick it right in there. It's exactly identical to the one that came out. goes to ground and the other one goes to this wire. has to be connected to ground.
All right. Okay, that takes care of the speaker. Okay. Okay, now for our this thing's a little bit difficult to turn, so I'm going to oil it. Ew, slick. Slick as can be. This way, down here. Okay, we should turn. About a half inch. And it needs to go this way just a little bit. Okay. All right. That should do it. It's turn it goes backwards, but hell of it. Okay, our light bulb. Okay, now we're putting in the line cord. Okay, we've got the little cardboard things here, and now where we ground the rivet out, we're just putting that back in using a screw. See, and that's held in there. Now, this one goes to the switch. Okay, and this one here is going 
to right there. Now, before I put that in there, I'm going to measure that capacitor. It may be okay, but if it's not, we have to change it. We save our old originals for the really nice radios. The, the, this one's going to be sold. This one here I'll sell. So I'm not going to put my good stuff in it. Okay, that takes care of the line cord and that one capacitor. Okay, we got another capacitor right here. Okay. We shall test. And that's another 05. here. Double O five. Okay.
this one. Okay, that takes care of all of the capacitors. Okay, we need our two filters. Okay. Okay, now here we have looks like a firecracker, but it's actually a filter capacitor. <laughs> Alright, it's got its own little mounting tape here. I don't know. This is pretty darn old. I don't know if it's gonna stick. It's absolutely worn out. Okay, now that gets the whole radio recapped. Okay, now here we have a couple of antennas. It looks a little big. I think this one will be better. See, this one, if we put this one in there, going to be sitting next to the uh, chassis there which may seriously affect the tuning. So let's go ahead and use this one here. Uh, 
All right. Tap. Okie doke, that gets us an antenna, and this hopefully is going to fit. <laughs> okay, we want to take it off <coughs> right where those screws are. Okay. sort of professional looking. Okay, that gets our, gets our little loop antenna in there, which should work. Okay, now we need to put the tubes in. <coughs> Alright. Okay, 12SA7 is first. Z5 is next. Let's see, this is so dirty. Alright, let me test it first. Check, make sure the filament's good. Sometimes these are very, very common to have the filaments burned out in them. So we'll check it. It's got a burned out filament. I'll have to go get another one out of the attic. Okay, let's see. All right, let's see, we'll put them in here. We'll 
good enough. That makes it look look a little newer. Okay. All right, that's four tubes, and then the last one is this one. That's it. All right, now that gets us to where the radio is restored. Okay, let's juice it up and see that it does play. that <laughs> hey this happens you know I don't know what that something in here shorted out <laughs> all right let's see let me get What I'm wondering... It's not in the right place. Not in the right place. <clears throat> oh. What a complete dumb dumb. I put the damn thing in the wrong place. What a dumb dumb. Did I burn this one out? That's why it did what it did. It might still be good. We'll see. <laughs> hey, I'm old. I got excuses. Okay. Now. Now let's see what happens. That looks better. That looks better. All right, here's we got a nice new one. Let's try this one. Well, something is killing this thing. Okay, the very first thing that we do when we're um, troubleshooting the radio is we measure the voltages on the tube pins and make sure that they are in the area that they should be. All right, I got the ohmmeter, not ohmmeter, but voltmeter set to um, 250 volt scale. I'll just lay it here, you can see it, maybe. Um, all right, let's see. We'll turn the power on. Okay, now, let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the, um, the main B plus voltage. Okay, we'll get ground. All right. Here. Whoa! That was interesting. Blew the electronic fuse. I, I run all of the stuff that I have through an electronic fuse. If you look over here, this device here is an electronic fuse and it has the capability to set the current that it's going to blow at and how many cycles of AC that it'll let through before it blows. 
So right now I've got it set to four cycles of AC. So the, the, the sine wave will go four times and then it'll break if the current is above the ampere setting that we have set. Now I've got it set right now for an amp and a half because it's just a small radio. So when that thing shorted out, whatever happened there, it detected it and cut the current immediately. Now by having a device like this, it makes it to where if you have something go wrong, or if you're uh, doing things like Electro Boom does, uh, you can go ahead and save yourself from blowing things up. It'll, it'll usually cut the power long before you kill anything. Alright, let's see. Wow. I don't know what that was. Well, whatever it was, it took out something. Because when we turn the power back on, the uh, pilot light does not light up. Did it burn the power the pilot light out? All right, we look at the pilot light. Okay. The pilot light is toast. So whatever shorted out there um, took the pilot light out. Now that the pilot light in these radios is the fuse. It's in series with the line cord, and whenever something shorts in the radio, that pilot light serves as your fuse. So not only did we blow the electronic fuse, but the uh, the thing that keeps the radio from flashing into fire uh, also blew. Now. Uh, let's test this. Check this tube. This is the rectifier tube. They they do have the capability of going bad. All right, go back to ohms. Okay. All right, the filament in this one is burned out. Okay, and we we'll look at the. Ooh, that's a short. Okay, 35Z5. Let's see, we look this up in there. Okay, 8. In 8 is the cathode. Okay. Ah, there's the trouble. We have a dead short from the cathode to the filament. That is extreme doom for the radio. Okay, so we have a shorted 35Z5 rectifier tube. All right, let's see. Oh, I got another one here. Okay, now this one here, I just got out of the attic. Those are good. No short there, no short there. Okay, this one here is good. Let's put it in there. Yeah. All right. H. Okay. Okay. Let's just give us another. Number of number 47s is shrinking because that's the most popular bulb. But a number 44 will work just as good. They're, they're just as good for these radios. Okay? Alright. Now, um, well, let's turn it on and see what happens. All right. Could be that that's the only problem that we had. That's it. All right. Uh, we got it working. It um, had a bad 35W4 rectifier tube. Okay, so that's working now. And the radio works. OK, 
Okay, now let's see, for alignment we're going to set the generator to um, 950. care of the chassis. We are one much wrong. I don't know what that smoke was. <laughs> it had something to do with plugging the tube in the wrong socket. Okay, now this one, what we're going to do first, we have to completely strip it down. Now we've got some paint on here. I don't know whether that'll come off. What I'll do is I'll get a little lacquer thinner and see if that'll come right off. Otherwise, I'll have to use some paint remover, which I have. Okay, then um, I would like that dial out of there, which... Okay, we've got to get these two little clips out of here. I might be able to get them. Just grab, take a pair of cutters and you just grab the corner of it and pull up, and it'll release them. Okay, and then we can get the, the little dial out of there. We'll clean that up and it's in good shape. It Does, doesn't need any work, just cleaning up. Okay, <clears throat> and we save the little clip thing so we don't lose them. Put it back together again. Okay, now the inside, um, I'll probably just Do a nice little cursory cleaning in here. Nobody's going to see the inside. Okay. Now, this side over here in the bottom. Hi there, little girl. Hi there, little girl. That's my kitty baby. Got to clean that side because we're going to have to epoxy that crack. The crack is right in the corner there, and it's it's out of the way. The chassis doesn't go there, so it, it'll be gravy to fix it. We can see that crack there. Okay, let me get some thinner, and we'll see what we have to do. All right. Let's see. This is acetone. It it, it might take it. We'll see. Acetone here. Takes it right off. Okay. Looks like somebody was spray painting something right near the radio and got it all over it. It's not. It's, it's all dirt. It's not. Um, not something that's solvent. 
Okay, let's get some, some steel wool and we're going to polish the cabinet. Okay, this is um, coarse steel wool. We'll use it first to get all the rough stuff off of it. I don't know what that is. It looks like tape. It's not uh, super important. The main thing is to have it smooth. The, um, so the paint will stick to it. We want the paint to stick to it and um, we want, um, want it to be smooth. Okay, that's doing good. Okay, here. Okay, that pretty much does it. Alright, now, something I found that is good to do is to clean the thing with, with solvent before we paint it. We're not going to paint it yet, we're not going to clean it yet. We're going to do the, um, the epoxy job first. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put JB Weld into the crack and get the crack sealed, put together. Then after that, we're going to go on the inside and we're going to put a layer of epoxy to make sure that um, you know any vibration or something's not going to crack it again. All right, let's get some JB Weld. All right. It's pretty good epoxy. I've used it a lot before and I've, I've had very good luck with it. All right, thoroughly in there. Okay. Okay, and we'll get some lead weights to put on there to hold it very firmly uh, pinched together and then we let it harden. Take about half an hour. Okay, now go ahead. OK. 
Okay. That looks extremely good. Now we're just going to let that sit without bothering it for, for at least an hour. Okay, this thing has been sitting overnight. Absolutely solid as a rock. Okay. Okay, that takes care of that crack. Now, the next thing we need to do before we spray it is we need to sand it down. What this does is it breaks the glaze. I'm just going to use 220 grit uh, sandpaper and I'm just going to sand the cabinet. It's just going to break the glaze on the um, Bakelite to make it to where the paint will stick very firmly. This also smooths it off the last little bit, makes it perfectly smooth. Now, I particularly want to smooth this off. I'm going to put it on a power sander. Just take a second here. See, that makes that absolutely a smooth. The crack will be out of, out of uh, sight completely. Okay. That looks extremely good. All right, now we're going to paint it a metal flake blue, which ought to be really pretty. First, before we paint, uh, we're going to go ahead and use some solvent here. This is a, a completely evaporating solvent. It leaves no residue. And we're just going to wipe the radio off with that, get the last traces of um, powder from the sanding off of it. This stuff dries instantly leaves no greasy residue at all that would screw up the paint. Okay, first I'm going to do the outside, then we'll tip it over on the back and we'll do the rest. Ooh, that's beautiful. You don't want to put it on so heavy that it runs. It's better to put two coats than to have it run. Okay, we're going to let that dry completely, and then we're going to put our second coat on there. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Alright, this thing's been drying for two hours now, and it actually looks good enough with one coat of paint. This, and when we put the, put the clear coat on it, it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to leave it with just one coat. Okay, now... Our glaze is going to be this tabletop glaze, 
and uh, you just mix this stuff together, one part of each, and it makes a really shiny stuff. Okay, I'm going to use cat food container, old cat food can. Okay. Now, one thing about this stuff, you want to mix it thoroughly. They give you all this deal about mix it in two different containers, pouring it back and forth and all this kind of nonsense, but uh, so that you uh, get all the stuff off the sides. It takes forever for the stuff to dry so we can mix it here for several minutes and not have to worry. Okay? Alright. Now mix this continuously for two minutes here to make sure it's absolutely mixed. Okay, I'm going to start doing the top. Now, when you're done with it you want to set it on something up off of the table Something that has very small contact points on the back so that they don't um, uh, stick. So I got two pieces of uh, plastic tubing here and I got them taped onto the uh, table so this will sit there okay. All right, now we get busy. Just drag it on there smoothly as you can. Try to keep as few bubbles as possible. The bubbles settle out, but you want to you want to try to still keep as few as possible. Okay, that is absolutely beautiful. Now, we let that go ahead and um, dry. We've used only about half of the cat food container full of stuff. So you can see a cat food container this size could do a radio that was actually bigger than this. But it's better to have a little extra than to run short. Okay, now we have to let this sit overnight. We don't disturb it overnight. Okay, this has been sitting overnight, and it's completely hard. All right, we just pop 
those things off of there. Oh, that looks good. It looks good. Ooh, shiny. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it on the power sander and I'm going to take that back edge off. See, we got a little bit of ripple on there for dripping. I'm going to just take that off of there to smooth it out. Okay, now that gets our cabinet done um, inside here. We're okay. I got one little ridge in there. Let me get a knife and we'll cut that out of there. Looks good. Now, this thing here. Okay, and that, let's see, how's it go? I guess like this. Okay, and then we have two, these little clip things. Perfect. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. Okay? Now, we have to take it and put the guts in it, and that'll finish it. Alrighty. Now, we have our little chassis here that we have finished. Our box. We'll go ahead and wipe that last bit of dust out of there. Okay, and this will fit. Okay, first thing I have to do, we've got a restraining hole right here that has been cracked out, so I'm going to go ahead and drill that out. Tap here. See, let's see if this goes. Okay. All right. Okay, got a couple of screws here. And we take this one. This goes right in there that and then okay okay we need two knobs that'll fit on there I think a couple of white knobs would look absolutely terrific Alright, got two identical ones here. 
That one says volume. Both of them say volume, so we'll have to. Okay, let me plug it in. Luckily, Blinds.com is America's number one online choice for custom with... Lifestyles Unlimited is the... Okay, that's it. Okay, one beautiful little table radio. Okay, see that's how you take a $10 piece of junk and turn it into maybe a $75 or $80, maybe even more piece of nice radio. Anybody would love to have that. Okay.